So I had just recently um, fornicated with my long-haired bass playing boyfriend on that late Saturday morning when I heard the prayer warriors outside my window. What the hell, he growled, disentangling himself from the cat that didn't care, while the cat that wanted him dead glared, paced the windowsill, and prayed along. The whole youth group was there, having no doubt been given the address of my new apartment, Den of the Devil, by my very worried mother. They were laying hands on my car, speaking in tongues, commanding Satan to release me back to the Lord, who they reminded him had bought my soul at Calvary, and they weren't going to just give their wayward sister over so easily. Well, by the time I had put clothes on and stumbled down the stairs, my landlady, Sandy, was already out in her tie-dyed terry cloth robe with palm tassels at the hem, head full of pink curlers, a Virginia Slim between her lips, calmly spraying them all down with a water hose. The sister prayer warriors loved Jesus but valued their hair and worried about their shirts becoming wet, transparent billboards of carnality, so they had run sobbing to their cars to pray remotely. The brethren endured the hardship like true Christian soldiers and occasionally defied the enemy by opening their parched mouths and taking long, dramatic drinks from the cold spray of persecution. It was glorious. And it may have been the first day in my newly backslidden state that I knew for sure that I would never, ever go back to being Pentecostal. <laughs> it's, it's not even because they're all crazy. I totally love the nut jobs. It's because I realized in that moment, as I delightedly watched those beautiful ballsy fools jabbering in a non-existent language in a very public space on behalf of my soul, and I watched my probably still drunk from last night landlady hose them down and listened to my very manly boyfriend through the upstairs window as he uh, screeched, laughed in that high-pitched little girly way that he couldn't do anything to stop once he'd started. I realized in that moment that the Holy Roller version of crazy was awesome for some, but it was just never meant to be my brand of crazy. And I know in my soul that we all have a holy, sacred calling to love, honor, and obey our own brand of crazy. And the church said, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. But I'd be lying if I said it was an easy goodbye. I returned to their services just to visit many times because I missed my friends. When the rocker boyfriend left me without even saying goodbye at all, I went back there even more for a while because I really missed my friends. But I never forgot who I really was. I never did reassimilate. I just faded slowly with the see you laters, even though I knew it had really always been goodbye. A lot of things have happened in the 17 years since that awesome day, and I now have a 13-year-old, purple-haired, Unitarian Universalist, atheist daughter who rolls her eyes at everything I say and do because she knows all the things about all the things. <laughs> And I have a 71-year-old white hair in a bun United Pentecostal mother who rolls her eyes at everything I say and do because she knows all the things about all the things. <laughs> Case in point. Last weekend, the family said our final goodbyes to a cousin whom I never really knew very well. For reasons that may become obvious, this family branch was not all that close to my family branch. Tony, my cousin, he, he didn't live for Jesus. Mostly none of that part of the family did. He was a cussing, drinking, smoking, fighting, womanizing biker dude. Until about three weeks ago, when it apparently occurred to him that a guy with terminal brain cancer might ought to get baptized. Isn't that great? Live hard, die saved. Excellent timing on this part. <laughs> so there I was at a biker memorial in the basement of an old membership allegedly required club in a sketchy part of town. It had a very broken chairlift halfway up on the stairs on which sat a crookedly mounted deer head and a dirty shot glass. The whole place smelled like a heady mixture of Salisbury steak TV dinners, a thousand cigarettes, leather, and feet. I sat there between my parents and my daughter, listening to an inebriated man whose neck and arms were more tattooed than not, one eye shut with fresh stitches trying not to swear too much, while he preached our brother Tony straight into the open arms of Jesus. Amen. 
I sat beside my mom to the left, who could only have been less comfortable had the adjacent open bar come with complimentary showgirls. <laughs> and probably just didn't think of that, actually. My daughter sat to my right, defiantly asserting that the guy in the urn would definitely not have wanted all this god bull crap, and he would have told them all to shut the hell up and go get their drink on, and could she please go check out the jukebox when this was finally over. These two women, one who came from me and one from whom I came, different in almost every way, shared their rock-solid certainty that there was going to be no meet and greet with Jesus at the Pearlies for Tony. This was not, they would assure you, a see you later, but most definitely a goodbye. As for me, I'm sure I wasn't alone in wanting to believe that I could sense Tony somewhere having a beer and laughing with and at us. But who the hell knows? I scanned the crowded, fidgety room for familiar faces, noticing the rapt attention and uncomfortable floor gazing, the nodding heads and the nervous throat clearing of all the sinners and saints alike, until the witches, which of those categories, got all jumbled up in my heart and all I could just see was a big old blur of people saying goodbye to one of their own. I suddenly and passionately loved them all and stopped being so damn ready to get out of there. I was jolted back to attention when I realized that in the middle of the crowds toward the back left corner, meeting my gaze with a crooked smile, was my old long-haired bass playing boyfriend of the hosing down the Holy Rollers weekend. I thought for a minute that I really was seeing apparitions, and then that maybe my fruit punch from the potluck table had been spiked. I'm still not unsure of that, but there he was. We talked afterward. He had known Tony through the band, having played at some of the bars that he had frequented. He'd gotten back together with and married his high school sweetheart shortly after we broke up. I'd had a child, been married, divorced, and repartnered. So I always wondered whatever happened to you, he mused. I half expected that you'd gone back to being a good Pentecostal girl after my bad influence wore off. No, I said, I never went back. Good, he said, shaking his head as a still Pentecostal aunt walked by. Rather laugh with the sinners and cry with the saints, right? Yeah, but I still love him, so don't talk too badly about him, okay? I smiled and nudged him gently. So, hey, I gotta go, he eventually said. Let's keep in touch, okay? Like, for real. Not in 17 more years, or after another funeral. I'd like that, I said. So I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy this weather. And that was it. Because I'm still not so good at goodbyes.